Hello there, welcome to Cerro Gordo. My name is Brent, and just about a week ago, I thought I was gonna have a casual Friday, you know, clean up a cabin site, maybe go on a hike. Instead, I ended up with this five-ton military truck and going 900 feet underground, all thanks to a surprise visit. And that's what this video is all about. Holy sh no way! This is awesome. <laughs> Best adventure yet today. Yeah, I can. So we're stuck. At the 700. There's no damage. I'm on top of the cart and everything looks fine. We're just around that tight spot. So last Friday, I was working on this week in the life video. You know, living up here in this abandoned ghost town for the last year and a half, my life's a lot different than it was, you know, when I moved here. And so I was trying to put together this video to show the day-to-day -day activities up here, how I occupy my time. And last Friday, I had done my sunrise hike. You know, I had made breakfast, I had made coffee. And my plan for the day was to go to this old cabin site and continue cleaning it up in the anticipation of rebuilding it. And that is where the day took a very interesting turn Back to work. Time to clean up that big mess that I created yesterday, but it's okay. It was a mess that led to artifacts and I'll make that trade all day long. Artifacts for a mess, easy. You know, I was up here, I was working on this cabin site. My plan was just to clean up this road a little bit, get this cabin site ready for some volunteers that were gonna come and help me move the wood off to the side. And I was documenting the whole thing, you know, setting up time lapses and all this, trying to do this week in the life video. And I remember I was in the backhoe, sitting just about here, and out of the corner of my eye, I saw some type of commotion happening down in town. And I turned, and my brain kind of put two and two together, and I was like, Dave? Uh, I think Dave Sparks just came to surprise me. Uh, I'm cutting in a road. Yeah! <laughs> That's awesome! <laughs> it was Dave Sparks and just a massive five-ton military truck. Holy sh No way! Dude! No way! Holy sh Dang! <laughs> the whole crew, you know, guys that I work so much with pouring the footings, it just changed my day immediately, you know? It was so exciting to see them. I thought they were on a trip somewhere else, you know, somewhere in the area, and they happened to be coming through with this truck. I didn't put it together that this truck have been brought here for me. You know, that just didn't enter my mind. And then when Dave told me, it was just crazy. I was like, no way. You know, I've been looking for this for so long. Yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> wow. Right there. Oh, I do, I do. Look, I know you needed, uh, oh, you needed a truck. So we thought, what better thing to do than to go see Brent on a Friday, give him his new five ton, bring some beef, have a little barbecue and just hang out. Did you have any idea? Zero. Literally zero clue. <laughs> I, I literally thought you were doing that three four thing. I was like, that's awesome. Yeah, and then yeah. Today I was like, well, I go cut in a road. And then when I saw you guys, I was like, smile. I was like, hell yeah. That's <laughs> nice. Zero clue at all. That's awesome. So I didn't actually get to use this bad boy till the next day. You know, day one, Dave and Hunter and his team just kind of took me through the ropes and showed me how to use it. Lights are flicking right now. Yep. Run this switch here. Like that back and forth. But immediately, you know, on Saturday, I took my first water run down the hill with this thing. All right, so as you can see, construction has once again begun on the American Hotel. We're putting down some block, but block needs concrete. And if we know anything, concrete needs water. So I'm gonna go down and get some water, but that's gonna give me an opportunity to use this bad boy five ton that Mr. Dave Sparks brought up the other day for the first time. Time for the inaugural trip. If you've been watching this channel for a long time, you know that my main goal, my purpose beyond anything else is to rebuild the American Hotel here at Cerro Gordo. The American Hotel was this hotel built in the 1800s that tragically we lost 
last year in a fire. And since then, it's just been a battle against a lot of things, but one of the biggest hurdles in the rebuilding is transportation. You know, this town sits at 8,500 feet at the end of a seven mile dirt road. So getting anything up here is hard and getting anything heavy up here is even harder. You know, so that's why I think three months ago, Dave came up and we had this whole production to pour 81 yards of concrete and get the footings finally down. And then after that, I've just been scrambling to try to figure out how to get the block up, how to get the lumber up to start framing out this thing. And I texted Dave a couple weeks ago. I was like, hey Dave, you know where to those five tons? You know, they're fairly hard to get these days. And he didn't just recommend somewhere. He uh, showed up and surprised me with one to keep for myself. All right, I'm filled back up, but now is the real test. Now to try to take about 600 gallons back up the hill. So all that to say, you know, this truck is just an amazing addition to the town. It not only looks incredibly cool, it's incredibly useful, and it's gonna be put to use immediately for the rebuilding of the American Hotel. And so after Dave showed me how to use it, you know, his whole crew was down to just hang out. You know, and I was clearing this cabin site anyways, so everybody just chipped in and we cleaned up this site in no time. Welcome back, Dave. Hey guys. Thanks for being here. Hey, no problem. <laughs> Looking for treasure. It's good to see you, Jim. What's yeah. going on? Hunter, man, it's the whole crew's back. Look at this. <laughs> And what I thought was gonna take me the entire day took an hour, maybe. Dave's adding to our uh, China collection. What'd you find? I found a nice little teapot. There it is. There we go. And we'll be there forever. Yes. <laughs> and Dave came not just with a truck, but he also came with steaks, which I'd never have for lunch. Steaks from a cow that he actually raised himself, which is insane. Black lung pie. Pretty good. Ooh, look at that. I like that. I got this to... is Cerro uh, Gourmet. <laughs> these are our cows. Jim and I raised these cows up in the mountains of Utah. They're all grass-fed beef, uh, originally Montana cows, and it's going to be, well, you'll see, some of the best beef you'll ever have. So we all went down there. We got to catch up over lunch. Hunter wants to take people into a, a tornado. <laughs> Hunter's trying to build a tour bus that can withstand tornadoes, drive in, hunker it down, and let people experience being inside of tornadoes, not just for him. <laughs> you know, some fans came that knew both of us, which was fun, and I was thinking during lunch, I was like, man, you know, Dave, did all this for me, you know, came all this way. We gotta do something fun. We gotta do something exciting. We gotta do something epic. I just called the hoist operator, the guy that can operate the hoist. And I'm gonna try to take uh, Dave and Dave down into the Union Mine for the very first time. They haven't been there before. And I asked which, where they wanted to go. And they said, let's take it all the way to 900. I got some news for both the days. Uh, hoist operator is a go. Hell yeah. So we're going down in the mine today. Hold on, about. this will only be the second time you've ever been to 900, right? If we make it. If we make it, damn. If we make it. All right, so we're just getting geared up. We're gonna go down in the hole. Brian's gonna take us down. This is Dave's gift from earlier. And what better way to repay someone than take them 900 feet down into the ground on a hoist built in the 1800s. And just like that, there's the crew. This is the hoist house at Cerro Gordo. This is the reason the town is what it is. Because just behind the camera over there is the Union Shaft. And the Union Shaft is a hole that goes 900 feet straight down with levels every 100 feet or so. On this channel, it shows me going down into the Union Mine a lot. And at that point, it might feel a bit casual or without risk, but that's not the case. You know, Every trip down the Union Mine is dangerous. Every trip has its own set of problems and they're never quite the same. And so going down there, you're always very cautious of who you go with, but with Dave and Dave, they're about as good at exploration partners as you can hope for. You know, they're adventurous, they're fearless, they're resourceful to get out of situations, but they also have a good head on their shoulder where they're not gonna push their luck. And on this day, we ran into issues and we needed that calm level-headedness to get us out of there. So we're just doing all the pre-trip checks right now. Running it down a little bit. Oiling up everything. Everything's good, ready to go. We're not gonna die? 
Nah, not today. Not on my watch. Full cage. Full cage. We got a full cage, and I kept full. on. I was pushing for a fourth. But. Full cage for a good, uh, good hour. Or so. Yeah. Buckle up. One hour, man. We actually buckle up. Because no, there's no buckle. There's, no, there's actually, there's not only no buckles, there's no side to two of the different uh, ends of the cage. So All right, well, let's this do this is, thing. Uh, this is it. Oh, good news is we've got this. So um, this is this is the rescue plan. <laughs> if you guys remember last time I went down there, uh, we actually did have to use this. Oh yeah, it's kind of sticky. I think I don't like this idea. You know, if we get caught, what has to happen is somebody has to clip in, somebody has to go below the cage and cut our way out. So, uh, yeah, yeah I, I'm, I love it. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm not scared. Let's do this. <laughs> I remember my first time down on the hoist. It's terrifying. You know, you're thinking that you're using this piece of equipment from the 1800s and your life is literally on the line. And as we started going down, there was this kind of conversation around how many people could we bring down? You know, was it going to be too many bringing all three of us at the same time down there? <laughs> Which is uh, laughable considering what we ended up taking out of the 900 foot level. This is, uh, is going to be it for a while, guys. I love it. <laughs> how do they dig out a shaft like this? And so, drill? It's too deep to drill, right? I think dynamite, and then from my understanding, they just put like a rock on a string, you know, to make sure it's dead straight, and then just, you just keep to go straight. All the water at Cerro Gordo comes from right there. That's rad. <laughs> you guys hang that fly it? Fly yeah, it? yeah. And we signed it. The guys that put the water back in signed it. That's so cool. Yeah. <laughs> Try sticking your antenna in the hole. Okay, perfect. So it gets a little sticky here, just past the 700. Just, just hold you from there. <laughs> Give it a little bounce as it goes. <laughs> A little bounce, a little bounce. As it gets jammed up, give it a bounce so it doesn't <laughs> excess slack. Oh. Horse hair. So it, it, it should, it should, it should loosen up right around now, if I remember correctly. Yeah, last yeah. Time. yeah, at least it breaks up the. Yeah, we cut water. out a piece right there last time. Oh, did you really? That's yeah. where you use yeah. the. Yeah. Sounds all. And the trip down was relatively smooth. You know, we got down there without too many problems. You know, there's a bit of communication problems with the radios, but other than that. We were good to go. Wow. That's the bottom of the Union Mine. Holy shit, look at it go. That's a damn sun looking at him. Whoa. Oh my goodness. Well guys, if you look on the back side of your cage, <laughs> you'll see uh, Booyah. the 900 foot level of the Silver yes. Union Mine. Wow. This is it. And we're here. That's the cool. <laughs> And as soon as we arrived, I had that excitement that I normally have whenever I get into mines, but I could see that excitement in both Dave and Dave. So it's cool to be down there, almost like kids in a candy store. And although I had been to the 900 foot level, I never really explored it thoroughly. You know, I wasn't climbing over any collapses. The first time I was down there, I was down there just to put my plaque down there and get out. But this time we started going to every corner. It's so much more roomy down here. It's room, look at this guy. Not bad, huh? Yeah. Who drew that guy? I don't know. <laughs> I don't, this probably wasn't a collapse. This was probably stuff they mucked and never hauled out. You know, or they, they backfilled it in there because they just don't want to take it out. Right. Take it all. Imagine having to take waste rock 900 feet back up. Yeah. That was sucks. To try to think that we're like 900 feet underground. <laughs> that is pretty wild. Yeah. an old uh, powder room, like dynamite room, because of the the door they would have put that on there to keep people out of there. Yeah. I love it. I love a good adventure. <laughs> this is definitely a good adventure. Yeah, there is. I think that's the end of the road. Damn. Is this Galena? Uh, no, no, no. There's track below us, like it was keep going, you know, you can see some track there's track there. there. Track there yeah. Yeah. I brought uh, you guys one too. Some good specimens? Nice. Yeah. I figured I could go home with just one for me, I'd get one for my friends. <laughs> I appreciate that. Lots of uh, <laughs> unexploded 
dynamite. And are you going to touch it? That's what the Every, people want to know. I know. It's, that's Put in your me. comments below. Should he touch it? <laughs> what is, what's, what's going on with this? Brent, is this Kalina? Is it really heavy? Kind of. Let me see what we got going on here. Kick some stuff on here for a minute. I don't know what this is, no. That's what this whole thing is full of. Yeah. It's all up here, too. Do the old duck walk. <laughs> Tall guys, haha. <laughs> 1889. Damn. Wow. Corbet. That's cool. You know, and I enjoyed watching them experience what I'd seen before. And then I think I enjoyed it just equally amount when we started finding new areas, you know, new collapses to climb over. Heavy D is basically afraid of nothing down in the mines. And so he started climbing over collapses and we all followed. I remember in one of them, we were going up this chute, you know, and they're obviously following a Galena pocket up and up and up. This one's real loose, Brent. Okay, yep. And as we get to the top, we first found this pickaxe. This is some acrobatic shit oh, going on up dude. here. An old pickaxe. Really? Yeah. We're coming. That's what I'm talking about. And it was just deteriorated to all shit. You know, there was Nothing left of the handle, the head was rusted through, but it was still cool to find this pickaxe from, you know, the 1800s down in the mine. And just behind the pickaxe, we found this pocket of Galena. And Galena is the main ore that they're mining here, you know, it's silver lead. <laughs> and so we had the great idea that we needed to take this Galena with us back up top. So suddenly, Dave and Dave turned into miners, you know, they were taking the pickaxe head, hammering out the Galena out of the wall, Dude, Dana Meyer sucks. <laughs> <laughs> right Ooh, there you go. Big piece of fell yeah. down. Dang, we should have brought the rock hammer. Oh, no. Could have got some big old pieces out of there, huh? You know, it looked like I went to the strip club with all this glitter in my beard. <laughs> <laughs> guys is gonna be like, yo, sure you guys went to Sarah Gordo again. <laughs> I guess that we took some good pieces out. You know, we took some beautiful specimens back up to the top. But as we kept going through the mine, we kept finding more things that were just impossible for me to take out previously. Falling off small cliffs. Yeah. Well, falling off small cliffs is better than falling off big cliffs. Yes, it is. They found a canteen. Biggest damn canteen. <laughs> big boy ever. canteen. This is a solid. So you got some of the strap on the side? Yeah. That's at least a gallon or two. Yeah. And then a Prince Albert can, which we have plenty of. Classic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, seen better days, huh? Yeah, it has. See that tip? So they, would so they would drill into the rock. That's cool. Mm -hmm. You want this, Brent? You know, I was taking it out myself last time. <laughs> she didn't quite have the muscle. So the jack used to be put in place right up against the face of the mine to put the drills in, you know, so they could keep drilling and then blast and then continue the mine backwards. Think about it. So far on this trip, you've already got a mine galena and now you're moving a jack. So you're getting a sense of what life might have been like. Maybe more. And as we got there, I think that the spirit of let's take stuff that was impossible to take That's before took right over. Now. And so the idea came up to take this ore bucket. How much is it done? This guy move. And the difficulty was the ore cart was here and the hoist doesn't go all the way to the bottom of the shaft. So you got a 400 pound ore cart down here that needs to get into this hoist up here that we're not exactly sure if it'll even fit perfectly.
the sign. Sorry about your sign, Brent. No, it's all good. Dave and Dave started just creating this Jenga system where they put a block underneath the front part, then a block underneath the back, then a block on this, and a block on that. Now, we can put one more in the front. So before you know it, we had the leaning tower of ore cart, but to their credit, pulled it off beautifully. Yeah, baby! <laughs> okay. Now, we gotta clear those wheels. Yep, 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 yep. That's awesome. That's so cool. That's gratifying. Well, we still got to get the jack in here now. So. <laughs> so what do you think? This was awesome. <laughs> Best adventure yet today. Heck yeah. And we're coming home with some uh, decent treasure, oh, actually. Great treasures. This is probably the first time an ore bucket's ridden up on this hoist in 100 years. Hey, Dave. Yep. How's it going up there? Hey, here we are, just right on top. <laughs> it's spacious, man. It's, it's nice up here, I'll tell you that right now. You know, the, the cage was so packed that Heavy D had to stand on the roof. So he's on the roof of the cage. And as we got up towards the 700 foot level, it started just creeping. You know, the movement went from smooth to very jerky. So we knew that two things were happening. One, the hoist was struggling with the weight. And two, that's a part where the guide rails are in. So it was getting tighter and given all the extra weight, the hoist was having a really hard time pulling up this bucket. So we're stuck. The 700. There's no damage. I'm on top of the cart and everything looks fine. We're just around that tight spot by the 700 level. Have you had to pick up any extra weight or anything? Yes. <laughs> yeah, we have an ore cart. That's scary. You know, when you think that you're 700 feet underground, with a hundred and something year old cable that's having a hard time pulling you out, you think about a lot of things. You know, you think about the cable breaking, you think about even if the cable doesn't break, how are you gonna get out of here? Are you gonna walk up a 700 foot ladder with no rope? You know, so all these things are kind of going through our minds and we made the decision to get out. You know, there's about 10 feet above this was a 700 foot level and that was a really lucky thing. And so we climbed out of the cage, climbed up kind of the scaffolding around the shaft itself, found our way into the 700 foot level and from there, we were just a little bit more comfortable with them really gunning it, you know, trying to get it. Because if it were to break, at least we weren't in it. I can hear you. Okay, we are all off the cart, so you're good to give it a shot again. Say that one more time. We are all off the cart, standing on level 700, so go ahead and try it again. The only thing hanging tight right now is the elevator. Hanging very tight. And so we're having a ton of communication problem during the whole time. You know, looking over the hole, looking at the cage, trying to tell them to go up, go down, go up, go down. We are currently on level 700. The elevator is about 10 feet below us, so bring it up another 10 feet or so. Bring the hoist up another 10 feet. Can you hear me? Go ahead and bring the hoist up another 10 or 15 feet because we are not on it yet. It's below us as we're standing on level 700. And finally, they broke free. You know, finally we got past that tight spot. We jumped in without stopping the hoist at all and just rode it all the way back up. All right, we're moving again. They had to add additional braces on the far side. Oh yeah, hello there. We're almost home. It was amazing, you know, it was an experience that I'll remember for a very long time. I hope that, you know, Dave and Dave also remember for a very long time. And I gotta say, this is by far the biggest treasure I've all ever hauled out of the Union Mine. So we had that going for us. And then we all got topside, you know, and we had all sorts of other plans. I think we planned on being there and down there for two hours, maybe. I imagine it was about four or five in total. So by that point, the sun was setting, you know, we were all just were able to say our goodbyes. And uh, what started off as a day where I was gonna clean up some cabin site turned into 
you know, one of my most memorable days up here at Cerro Gordo. Today I started off, I thought I was gonna clear a cabin site. Yeah. And then I remember I was out of the corner of my eyes like, it's a big truck, <laughs> thought nothing of it. And then I thought, that might be Dave Sparks. <laughs> and, after, <laughs> and not only that, it's gone from clearing a cabin hey, site, now there's a five ton here. We've gone down to the 900 level. Yeah. We have an ore cart, we have a jack, we also have a treasure. I was gonna say thank you. you know, yeah. Every time you come, it seems like it's a crazy surprise. Yeah. And uh, man, this is this is gonna help us so much. You know, with the rebuilding of the hotel, I'm excited about it. After and, spending some time up here and realizing yeah. what your logistics challenges are, I happen to have this truck. This is one of the first five tons I ever bought. Actually, um, we just weren't using it. Yeah. Uh, it was parked behind my building, and uh, so I went out looking for five ton. I was I was trying to help you find it, and then I thought, you know what? We've got this guy right here. This is an M813. This is one of the coolest army trucks ever built. Um, difference between this and some of our other five tons is this is a five speed manual. So Brent's gonna be a man here driving this thing. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> we were very pleasantly surprised coming up the hill. Trucks get hot. Every truck that comes up and down this hill gets a little bit warm. This is the coolest running truck we've yet to bring up here. 180 degrees all the way up. This truck was stoked. Uh, big shout out to my guys, Hunter, uh, all my guys at the shop uh, for hustling, getting this thing done and ready. And now this is gonna become a piece of American mining history. As you can see with the logo on the door, Cerro yeah. Water Mines, this is yours, man. This is You're gonna see a lot more of this truck in the upcoming videos as we rebuild the American Hotel. So Dave and Dave, thank you guys so much. Hey, as welcome, always, buddy. appreciate it. Welcome, buddy. Thank you. Thanks for taking us down the mine. Uh, yeah, man. Woo. And what don't bitch when you see some ads running in Brent's videos because it's making this <laughs> town better, so. Yeah. I don't want to hear you complaining because we finally talked him into it. We'll rebuild. Good. 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 Good.